Good morning, YouTubers. This is your one, your only Chopadong, the DFS coach representing the DFS Army. Uh, go to dfsarmy.com and take a look at our VIP subscriptions and memberships. Uh, this is a world where we no longer do this on our own. This is a group think world. This is fantasy sports. Long gone are the days where people are rostering just the dumbest possible combinations of players you could ever find. Most everybody's getting information these days. Most everybody is sharp. What you need is you need advanced tools, advanced strategy, stuff like I'm going to walk through here with one of our uh, newer members. And he asked me yesterday in direct message inside Slack to kind of talk about do I rank players by tier or uh, price or how do I kind of go about categorizing players and shortening my list and I said you know what that's a great topic for a video stay tuned I'll make a quick video for you and we'll talk a little bit about how to put those lineups together um, for the newer players this is something we talk about a lot inside the army inside our slack channels we go into more and more detail than I can possibly do in videos possibly do in uh, Twitter comments etc etc which I thank everybody for the feedback while I've got your attention, run down there, click like, click subscribe. Uh, do what you need to do to show me a little bit of love to keep these videos flowing. Let me know they work. Let me know they help um, because I do get a lot of feedback. But obviously, like everybody else, we want to grow our reach and we want to expand who we're trying to help and make the whole world a better place um, as we learn this DFS thing together. So what I'm going to do today is I do this on occasion. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I call bottom-up building. I don't. I used to go by tiers. I used to rank my top three quarterbacks, and I used to maybe pick a guy that was high-priced, middle-priced, low-priced, and all that did was serve to confuse me. The more experience I got, the more I realized this whole thing is a sliding scale. Um, between quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, all that stuff. It's a big sliding scale. You're, you need to know where your value is on a certain slate. You need to know typically where your value is within positions, and then you need to use that accordingly. And the main thing we're going to do is we're going to start watching this average player, uh, average salary per player as we build lineups. But before we do any of that, I mean, well, I guess I should say, Typically, uh, running backs are very important when I do. They're, they're a consistent source of points. You can pay up and buy a higher and higher floor, and in some cases, buy two touchdown potential, big yardage potential, things that are really going to put you over the top. Like everything, there is a cap at which I just don't feel comfortable spending anymore because I don't feel the guy can really bring a ton of value. He has to have a great day to bring me the amount of points I'm paying for. And if he's in a tougher matchup, maybe he's, his chances of that have really slimmed down. Um, but I'm looking at other positions. Like uh, quarterback is obviously the most consistent position. Therefore, we look for favorable conditions, and we look for basically a way to save money. People that pay up for Tom Brady, great. If It's a luxury. If you've got the money because you found the value elsewhere in the slate, pay up for him. But I'm going to tell you most weeks, not the last two, but most weeks, you're going to find that guys like Deshaun Kaiser and guys like um, uh, Kirk Cousins last week have just as good a chance to bring you value. Did they outscore Tom Brady? No. But what they did was they were so cheap or they were cheap enough, they allowed you to pay up in other spots. So again, sliding scale. Some positions are worth more than others, and that's called position scarcity. Some positions, there are only two or three good options in there. We need to find those positions, and we need to focus on those. We need to find those players and focus on those spots. The um, wide receiver, very volatile position. You can pay up at the top for some consistency, but you can't often afford to do so. You oftentimes are taking at least one and maybe two very low-priced wide receivers, and you're going to get what you pay for. You might get a zero. You might get a 30. The thing is, you don't know. And in DFS, we don't like unpredictable situations. We don't like random uh, stuff where that 80-yard touchdown is great. But if it's only on three targets for the day, it's unpredictable. And if you hit it, you got lucky. Yeah, there's some skill in identifying which day it might happen, but generally speaking, get lucky. You're looking for guys that get lots of targets, lots of quality targets inside the red zone, even inside the 10-yard line, and you're looking for guys that score some touchdowns on the year because those things, touchdowns are not predictable targets, and red zone work is predictable. So you continue to put yourself in the best position possible, and you just let the numbers play out from there. 
Tight ends benefit from being at home, being favored, being in high-scoring offenses. They, 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 they actually benefit from games being close scoring in the fourth quarter because that's when they're involved. When they get down inside the five where a tight end scores most of his touchdowns, they aren't just punching it in with the running back or kicking a field goal because they're up by 10 points. They actually still need to trick the defense a little bit and throw to their tight end some. That's where you pick up those very volatile position though. Kicker, pretty steady. You're looking for, again, home teams, good weather, um, meaning not a lot of wind. And you're looking for spots on offenses that score a ton of points. And kickers, again, they're a little bit volatile in that some week they only get four extra points for four points, and some weeks they kick four field goals for 12 to 15 points. Those weeks vary, but again, put yourself in the right position and the numbers will play out. Defense is also volatile. But defenses are typically better off in big spread situations where they're big favorites. Why? Game flow, game script, that stuff helps you identify the, the defenses that are going to have the opposing quarterback throwing at them. Defenses that are going to be able to pin their ears back and just rush the quarterback because they've got a big lead and they know that the team is going to be throwing at them. So they can really just get after it and get, get you some sacks and force you some turnovers and things. That's where that stuff tends to happen. Not always. It is not a round ball, guys. When it hits the ground, it bounces funny. It's not predictable. Football's a goofy sport. But generally speaking, that's a positional outlay. You can check DFSArmy.com. I have a three tips by every position article that uh, I may put in a link to this article to help you out that gives you just some very generic qualities to look, to look for. I will say... Uh, defense, kicker, and quarterback, and tight end are typically the positions where you're kind of path of least resistance. Did they meet the qualities? Did they meet the character? Great. Least, uh, least pricey option available, please. And then I'm going to start working my way up. I generally will pay up a little bit at running back. I'll pay up a little bit at wide receiver when I can. But I'm looking to roster that salary cap with the basically least objectionable action or at least objectionable player and that tends to come from a cheaper guy that meets all the criteria another article that i may link this will probably be the last week that it is free is called box checkers another one on dfsarmy.com under the nfl tab you can look up where i show you in a graphic style which players are satisfying which criteria and then you just simply count the boxes did he check four boxes did he check six boxes Technically, on paper, now we got to use our heads a little bit, but on paper, the six box guy is a little bit better play than the four box guy. He's got a little bit better chance at bringing value. Did it work? Hell no, it didn't work last week. But typically, that stuff over larger samples, and I'm not even talking about a 16 game sample. I'm talking about 30 games, 40 games. These samples will pan out. You just need to be sitting in front of the steamroller when it hits you. That steamroller is usually carrying a dump truck load of money, and it hits you. And when it hits you, it's because you are properly positioned. And, of course, some people are better at doing that than others. So let's dive into a little bit of bottom-up building since we've discussed some of the players and some of the positions. And let's look at where we're going to go. What I typically do when I start building a lineup is I'm going down to the very least expensive option I can find that I can live with at a category and it starts right here with Las Vegas numbers okay I have a quick breakdown that I typically do you can go to a lot of different sites to do this from I just transpose it into my own graphic for my own um, contemplation or my own processing and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a lot of green numbers and what I'm going to find is big spreads big totals and then of course I've got a favorite and an underdog and I like home favorites as you, if you learned anything from last week, home favorites can be key. Road underdogs, or I mean home underdogs, are, are man, they can upset a little bit of that, but the road favorite often gets upset by that home team. Sorry for beating around the bush there. But we had a bunch of home underdogs last week that ended up winning their games outright because home teams typically play better. So I am looking for home teams, but I'm looking for home favorites as well. Those are the offenses I'm going to key on. They carry the higher implied totals. They tend to do better. They're more consistent is the, is really what it boils down to. They're a little bit more predictable. So Green Bay, big spread, big implied total. Like it. 
New Orleans small slate or small spread. Uh, you know, maybe both sides of this game are okay. You know, I don't really like them traveling across the ocean to London. I'm not going to go so far as to say that it's a low scoring game where neither team really provides. What I am going to say is oftentimes these games are unpredictable. Who thought Jacksonville was going to put a whooping on Baltimore 44 to seven. That's, that's a weird outcome for the way that game matched up. So, I mean, things do happen. And if you had a lot of Baltimore, like most people did, if they played that game, then you got screwed. Nobody had a lot of Jacksonville because they weren't, they didn't look on paper like they were going to do very well and sure as shit they did. So I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm not even calling New Orleans good. Don't get me wrong. This is just a weird type of situation. It does tell us both sides are kind of playable if we find something we like. Looking at New England, Dallas, Minnesota. Minnesota's offline, but I do anticipate this game coming online fairly soon and being okay. Eight and a half point spreads in the other games with big implied totals. These often imply running the ball late. We're not going to throw if we're up eight points in the fourth quarter. We're going to run the clock out. So do we have running backs? Well, Ezekiel Elliott had a pretty good game last night. Should be leaning on him again. Would We would look at the LA Rams and look at their run defense to see if they're usually pretty good at putting a lid on run production. But the other thing we're going to say is if Dallas is up, say, 10 points going into the fourth quarter, they aren't going to give a crap. They're just going to feed Zeke and run that clock out. And volume with running backs means a lot more than efficiency. You give me a guy getting 20 to 25 carries a game versus a guy getting 15 carries a game, and I'm going to side with the guy getting 25 carries. That's opportunity. That's opportunity to score you points. And the more opportunities we get, generally, the more points we score. Now, Tennessee, this game looks a little bit low. I won't be too terribly focused on it. doesn't mean there aren't some good plays to come out of it. We'll have to see how the week pans out. But as of right now, I'm not going to even turn my head that direction um, unless I have to for price considerations or something. Jacksonville, same thing. Yucky total. Cincinnati, yucky total. Pittsburgh, kind of a yucky total. I want to see it over about 24. It's close. But Baltimore is not a defense that we typically mess with. So, you know, especially on the road in Baltimore. Now, if it was at home, maybe. Um, Atlanta, here's where we're going to be spending most of our time, down here with the home favorites. Atlanta, 26-point total, 24, 23-point total. These guys are kind of all in play because they're home, they're favored, and they've got a decent implied total. Uh, Chargers, Arizona, Chargers, that again in a pick -em game. This Both sides of this game are pretty viable. Seven points in Arizona. If they had a lead dog like a David Johnson, we'd be all over him this week. Denver. Two and a half point favorite, 24.75 again. This could be C.J. Anderson style. Um, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas. These guys are all in play this week. We don't know necessarily where that scoring is coming from. Another thing you can do, 24 projected points is basically three touchdowns and a field goal. So you need to break up Denver's uh, snap counts and their distribution in the run game versus the passing game and see where those touchdowns are going to come from. If Denver was a 50-50 split in running touchdowns versus passing touchdowns, which they're not, but if they were, then you'd be looking at about 12 points for C.J. Anderson or Jamal Charles. And you'd see that C.J. Anderson gets two carries per Jamal Charles' one. So that would be about eight points for C.J. Anderson versus four for Jamal Charles on the scoreboard. These are generic ways to break this down and center where that production is going to come from. If they were three-fourths of the time a passing team, you would say, well, three-fourths of 24 you know, is, you know, what, 18? Therefore, there's going to be at least two touchdowns through the air in this game. Well, if Emmanuel Sanders gets one and a half times the touchdowns that Demarius Thomas does, then he might get the two touchdowns. They might get one each. I don't know, but I would lean Demarius Thomas. There are ways with numbers to break those down and find where that production is centered based on who's targeted in the red zone, who's targeted more often, who's generally scoring the touchdowns and things like that. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you really dive deep into to figure out. I don't do that. I'm more of a superficial guy. I know how to do that. I just don't. I get I get almost all the way there most weeks just by doing this, hitting the superficial surface stuff. Seattle looks like to be in a great spot. Great spot. If that uh, Carson, Chris Carson kid is for real and it's going to get all the workload, he's in a hell of a spot versus Indianapolis. So is the Seattle defense. Remember I said big spreads? Big spreads for defenses at home. Yeah, Dallas is in play this week. 
um, Atlanta's in play this week. Atlanta got priced up accordingly. So now that we kind of have a couple of targets here that we're looking for, and on the Monday night game, of course, KC, Kareem Hunt should be leaned on once again. The kid has been hitting home run after home run. Take those home runs out, and, you know, he's an average running back. But, man, give him those home runs. You could see why he's priced up there with Le'Veon Bell and whatnot. But, anyway, uh, four touchdowns scheduled to be scored in that game. Alex Smith probably get a couple. Um, Kareem Hunt might get one or two. I mean, who knows? But that's generally the way that's going to go. And, of course, their defense is in play. So, brief rundown. Let's dive into the quarterbacks. Let's go find our home favorites as low as we can go. Um, immediately, I'm, Brady's going to be expensive. Uh, Rogers is going to be expensive. Dak Prescott, probably not. I don't know if I can do Case Keenum. Uh, I tend to do home teams, home favorites. Matt Ryan is going to be expensive. Jameis Winston, eh, not quite as high a total here as Dak. Um, Chargers, Phillip Rivers, again, not quite as high as total. Carson Palmer, maybe. It's a little bit cheaper. Simeon's a little bit cheaper, maybe. Russell Wilson's at home. I kind of, on this list, I'm automatically looking at Dak and maybe Jameis Winston or whatever. So let's check their prices and go find the cheaper one. There's Dak. And there's Jameis. So let's punch Jameis Winston in. Cheapest we could live with that satisfies a few of the criteria. Running backs, big spreads, preferably at home. Grind that clock out late. Uh, Gillisley, uh, Ty Montgomery, if we were playing that slate, I think that the one I called up to the main slate. Um, Ezekiel Elliott again. Devonta Freeman, kind of in a committee. Uh, nobody in Arizona that I trust. Uh, C.J. Anderson, Carson, pick two. We run down this list at running back. Oh, Dalvin Cook, that's an interesting one. In Minnesota, you know, hopefully at home, hopefully they're favored. Dalvin Cook's down there. There's C.J. There's Carson. So let's do, let's do the old Car Chris Carson and C.J. Anderson bit. Okay, now again, this is just the first run through. What I'm doing is I'm watching this salary and I'm trying to see if I like it or not. Wide receivers, don't really care about the Vegas stuff here as much as I care about high totals. So the Green Bay guys would be in play. Michael Thomas would be in play. They get Willie Sneed back, don't know, first one coming off injury. I think they're getting him back. The New England Patriots spreads the ball around a lot. It's hard to pinpoint where that's going to go. Is it going to Hogan? Is it going to Amendola? Is it going to... Um, Gronk, is it going to Cooks? I don't know. Dallas, that looks like a Dez type of game, maybe, to score a couple of these points. Scrolling down the list, uh, not exactly high totals here. Uh, Pittsburgh may be in play. I don't know. Jacksonville for cheap. Uh, Tennessee for cheap. I don't want to pay up for $9,000 for a receiver coming out of a game only implied to score 22 points. But I will pay down for that. Atlanta, there's Mohamed Sanu. I, I, Sanu's probably in a pretty damn good spot, being they're scheduled to score a lot of points. So I would probably look to Sanu, um, maybe Hogan, maybe Dez, I don't know, J.J. Nelson again, um, Jerron Brown, these types of guys. Larry Fitzgerald had a hell of a week. If he can back it up, he's in a good spot. And that price didn't adjust. Uh, Seattle, it's Doug Baldwin, uh, What's his name? Uh, Paul uh, Richardson territory. And then two of my favorites um, sitting over there in Denver, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas. Over here at a 22, Oakland's not terrible. I love Crabtree and Amari Cooper most of the time, but they're getting pretty expensive. Some of these other guys. So we're just going to dig in. We're just going to dive down this list and start seeing how low can we go. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, the target monster. Keenan Allen, there's a decent one. L.A. Chargers, 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 Chargers. At home, scheduled to score some points in a pick em. Okay. Might like some Keenan Allen. Uh, grab a Sanders. Grab a Hogan. Where's Sanu? He, dirt cheap, potentially. J.J. Nelson, if you liked him. Cooper Cup. Oh, look at Sanu, all the way down here at 5,600. That freed up some salary, didn't it? Tight end, same way. Big home favorites. Uh, Gronk, expensive. Uh, because it's such a volatile position up and down, I would rather pay way down at the position than up. I can't afford to pay $8,000 for a crazy up and down position that might get me two points, might get me 20 points. If I'm going to get between two and 20 points, I might as well spend as little money as possible to get it. So Dallas, that's Jason Witten territory. So he's in play. Kyle Rudolph's probably in play. Delaney Walker's probably in play. Uh, where's 
Philly, 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 Philly. You're over here. That's Zach Ertz. He's a pretty consistent performer. Uh, a couple of these other guys. Am I going to try and predict the Mercedes Lewis thing again? No. Uh, Jesse James, probably not. Austin Hooper, maybe. Just looking down this list for dependable tight ends. I don't really see any dependable ones, so I might have to pay up some. Okay? So Gronk, Ertz. Um, Ertz might be where I go. Witten's priced up pretty good. Jared Cook in Oakland. Eh. Doyle, uh, Clay's having a hell of a season so far. What's the Buffalo situation? They're on the road in Atlanta, aren't they? Yeah, see, I don't typically like that. But where else are the points coming from out of this Buffalo offense? Maybe he's viable. I just don't see this being the type of – they're going to have to throw. Hmm, they are using him. It might look – we might need to look into that a little bit. Uh, Rudolph's down low. Jesse James, there's Hooper. Let's just grab uh, – I've already got Mohamed Sanu in there. I don't want two pass catchers without their quarterback, and I certainly don't want three guys three guys from the same offense in a typical cash lineup because it really starts to depend 100% on that game going bonkers. And if that game disappoints, my lineup's going to disappoint. Throw the old Kyle Rudolph in there and see what's up. Cheapest kicker possible. Home, favored, Phil Dawson. I, I'm not really comfortable with that you know, personally, but that satisfies the criteria. If I'm hurting for salary, I might do it. But instead, I might just kind of pay up a little bit. Home, favorite, four bath, eh, maybe. I kind of like a little. There's Seattle and a big 13-point favorite at home. Now, the 4,800 versus 4,500 isn't like a massive spend up or savings. You know, it's not even massive to get all the way up here from 4,500 to 5,100 is 600 bucks. So you're going to get a wide range of plays at kicker across the industry in a lot of cases. Um, scrolling down, we're not going to go too far. Well, Minnesota's maybe not in a bad spot. Let's see. Sorry if this is getting a little bit boring, but it is what it is. It's just building lineups. This is actually the fun part, but Minnesota at home, if I threw them in there. Look, I got $5,200 left over to spend up in all of these spots. If I wanted to take out Jameis Winston and uh, throw in the Tom Brady stack with Hogan, I can certainly do that and still have $3,000 to play uh, play with. If I want to take out Chris Car Chris Carson and come up at running back, look, I can get Le'Veon Bell and still have 1000 left over to play with. If I'm happy with the rest of this, 1000 left to play with, okay. Um, let's take out Kyle Rudolph and see what we can get at tight end. I mean, maybe we pay up a little bit. Jimmy Graham, Jason Witten. You know, 600 to play with. All right, let's upgrade the defense. Up to Atlanta. They're at home. They're a big favorite. You know, I mean, now look what you've got. You've got largely home teams. You've got, a, you know, studs. I mean, Le'Veon, you, you might reevaluate that being on the road facing Baltimore, but you might not. You know, let's say we take the Le'Veon Bell and we drop down to Zeke. Let's say we take Tom Brady and we drop down to Dak. Where's Dak? Now let's say we take C.J. Anderson and we come up to Devonta Freeman. Got 700 left to play with. My lineup's completely different. Manuel Sanders, Chris Hogan, Mohamed Sanu, Witten. Say I drop back down to Kyle Rudolph. Let's say with the Atlanta off defense. Drop down to, hell, the Patriots. You know, 1,200 to play with. Chris Hogan. Take him out. A.J. Green, Mike Evans, Target Monster. Des Bryant at home. Already got Zeke in the lineup. Mari Cooper, Crabtree, DeAndre Hopkins. Doug Baldwin at home. Keenan Allen. 800 left to play with. Sanu. Come up to 6,400. See what that does for us. See how this lineup's changing? Alan Hearns, Brandon Marshall, Adam Thielen, Jordan Matthews, Calvin Benjamin, Tyrell Williams, and in, in, uh, well, I'm not going to run him and Allen without Phil, Philip Rivers. You know, maybe I leave it alone. Maybe I, I want to buy this down just a little bit more. So I take Freeman out. Drop down to Dalvin Cook. Now I've got 7,400 at wide receiver. Crabtree. If he gets cleared and he's okay, look at that lineup. Again, this is what you do. You just kind of jerk around and you play and you massage and you try to figure out 
Who's the best? I don't really care. This lineup could go off. The one I previously built could go off. What I know is that all of these players are in pretty darn good spots. Now, what I don't know is how the games are going to play out. So me typically, again, another article to look for on DFSArmy.com is the ladder strategy. I tend to make three lineups, four lineups, five lineups per week, and I tend to sprinkle them all in a bunch of different contests. If I'm, put, I'm spending 10 bucks a week on a lineup, I'm going to put $5 in 50-50s and double-ups because once that five dollars turns into ten dollars it's the easiest cash line to cross it's the first one i'm going to cross and as that happens then it unlocks five dollars worth of winnings so five plus the five dollars i get back is ten bucks my whole lineup's paid for if that intrigues you read that article on top of that I, hope I will enter some triple ups, quintuple ups, and some leagues, and some bigger contests and things, because I don't know where my lineup's going to stop growing. What I do know is that by taking some of these chances and playing around a little bit, this lineup is going to maybe stop at the 50th percentile, maybe stop at the top 30%, maybe stop at the top 20% and unlock triple ups and quintuple ups. I don't care as my lineup, I'm aiming for the 50-50. That's why I build a very ca safe cash style. However, what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to add some upside. I'm maybe going to correlate and stack a little bit. This is bad. Dalvin Cook and Kyle Rudolph with not, you know, without running Case Keenum is not correlated very well because if Dalvin Cook and Kyle Rudolph both had great days, the quarterback probably had a good day. So I need to go back and review this a little bit. But the point is, I'm going to start taking some riskier plays. Like instead of Michael Crabtree, Let's say I wanted to infuse a little bit of risk and took Amari Cooper instead. I need another 100 bucks. Where am I going to go get that? Well, let's say I take Zeke out and I drop to Devonta Freeman. Not Devonta. Well, what the hell? LaShawn McCoy. Todd Gurley. Gurley. Okay. He's been all right lately. Now, again, he might not meet all the criteria, so that might be a little risky. But it might pan out, and that might not only get me past my cash lines, but that might get me into my 100-man leagues because nobody else is taking Todd Gurley. If he has another day like he had last Thursday night, then I'm going to cruise up in the money on those leaderboards, and I'd be fine with it. This is where we start getting blurred between GPP and cash and stuff like that, and you guys need to read that article. You need to become members in the DFS Army to sort through all this stuff. I don't have enough time in a day to sit here on YouTube all day long and talk to you about this stuff. Nobody does. You need to learn these things to get better at DFS. You need to subscribe to the DFS Army and become a VIP so we can talk about this stuff. Because this may have confused you more than it helped you. But the more we talk about it, the more it starts to make sense. You look at the, the Vegas lines. You target your offenses. You look inside those offenses at who's getting the production. And then you look at the cost on FanDuel. Then you look inside the positions. And you buy the cheapest player you can that's in the best spot you possibly can. And then once you've filled that lineup out, you start upgrading. And you start reaching for studs, and you start stacking people together, and you start looking for ways to win these tournaments and contests. And then you layer your contests with a safe element of 50-50s and triple ups and things, and then you add in the quintuple ups, the leagues, the tournaments, for the upside in case your lineup goes absolutely bonkers. You're building for it to be safe, but you're adding in on the week of the what if. That's what wins you your money. You hold on to more money when you have a subpar week this way, and you capitalize on upside. If you don't believe me, go look on our Twitter feeds and go look inside the articles we're posting inside the Army. We had one of our coaches and contributors use that ladder system last week, turned 80 bucks into 600 bucks. Why? He layered his contests appropriately. You need to learn how to do these things. That's where these players have advantages on you. That's why you're redepositing and they're taking your money and taking their girl out to dinner. You're lucky they're not taking your girl out to dinner. Contemplate a VIP membership. I will give you a coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, for 20% off the DFS Army. You get access to all of our tools, our optimizer, all of our coaches, all of our help and Slack. I'm telling you, you won't find a more dedicated group of people. This is the best kept secret in the industry. We love what we do. We love helping. We want to teach you, but you have to take the leap of faith and you have to jump in. 20% off lifetime of your membership. Use coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. Follow the link in this description and come to the website through the links that I am linking in this article for you. 
That's 30 minutes of your time. I think that is enough value to interest you in what it is that we do. If not, you are missing the boat because this was just the tip of the iceberg. Guys, peace out.